In today's webinar, we'll be learning about internet browsers and the difference between them and how to make the most of each of them. Now, firstly, I'll be going over what factors you should consider when choosing a web browser. Firstly, the security. A reliable search engine prevents viruses and malware from downloading onto your computer. A good browser ensures your personal safety such as securing your passwords and a lesser chance of being hacked or pirated. Now, uh, secondly, the speed. The fastest internet browsers allow you to open websites, emails, and documents quicker and more efficiently. A good browser can also load web pages, multiple tabs, and applications with lightning speed and no slowdowns whatsoever. Now, continuing with the factors you should consider for your browser, another one is syncing. So an example of syncing is that you can save and synchronize your history, bookmarks, and passwords to your Google account. That way, you'll always have them on any device that you're signed in on. So next, compatibility. This includes with different websites on the internet and browser extensions, which are becoming more popular. Browser extensions are small programs used to customize your search engine. You want a browser that allows you to use extensions to personalize your internet needs. You should also consider your device compatibility. It is the ability to transfer your data from one device to another. For example, you can create a Chrome account, which you can sign into anywhere, and that also saves all your data um, and personalization features, as we mentioned, through syncing. A good browser allows you to access it across different devices, no matter where you are. Now, choosing an internet browser. There are so many different ones to choose from, but firstly, we'll start with Chrome, the most popular web browser. This is designed to be one of the fastest web browsers. It's clean and simple to use, and Chrome keeps you safe with its built-in malware protection. Great syncing capabilities across devices, and Chrome is the most popular browser since it is the most well-rounded and the most popular in terms of the user interface. Less energy efficient because it is more powerful, but it also has the most compatibility. Secondly, Microsoft Edge. It is the same search engine as Chrome, making it more compatible with all of Chrome's extensions and sites. And that search engine is something called Chromium. It's the most popular search engine as well, not to be confused with search browser. Microsoft is faster than its predecessor, Internet Explorer. It's also more user-friendly than Explorer and very energy efficient. The new Edge has superior privacy and security features a list than other browsers. And you should know that for those of you with Windows 10 uh, desktops or laptops, Microsoft Edge is the best browser for that platform. Now, Firefox. This one is fast and even faster than Google Chrome. It has the newest version, also has more security than before. However, it does not use Chromium, Google search engine making it a good choice if you want to use Google. A lot, it allows for more customizability, so extensions. Now, Apple Safari, that can be found on Apple devices only. It's fast, but not as fast as Chrome or Firefox. It's secure and has good privacy control. However, it's not as customizable as other browsers with extensions and plugins but it's more energy efficient than some competitors and it works uh, and it is the best browser to use on your Apple devices. Now, Internet Explorer. This browser is energy efficient and therefore saves battery when using it. It is not as secure as other browsers and you should know that it also doesn't receive new updates to better the security. Um, Internet Explorer provides add-ons, but not as much as Firefox, and a lot of them don't work very well. It is not recommended for usage anymore, as it is going to be discontinued and replaced with Microsoft Edge, the second browser we went over. 
Now, which browser is the fastest? Firefox is one of the fastest browsers. You can have more tabs open without feeling a slowdown. And relating to this, it's also helpful if you have a lot of RAM on your computer, random access memory. Chrome is the second fastest browser. It loads web pages, multiple tabs, and application with lightning speed. However, it's known to take up a lot of random access memory in your computer. So that might be something to look out for when purchasing a computer. It's recommended that you have at least eight gigabytes of RAM nowadays. Now, which browser is the most secure? Google Chrome has been named the most secure browser at hacking events for two years straight. During both events, the browser was not hacked while Microsoft Edge, Firefox, and Safari were all compromised at least once. Now, which browser is the most energy efficient? Internet Explorer was the most energy efficient browser. They used up to 18% less power than Chrome and Firefox, but this browser is not recommended for usage anymore. Therefore, Recently, Microsoft Edge is the most battery-friendly browser followed by Brave, Firefox, and Opera. Now, what is the most popular internet browser? Chrome is the most popular internet browser with Firefox in second. Now, if you look at this pie graph on the left side of your screen, you can see that 62% of all internet users use Google Chrome as their main browser and then Firefox with 14%, Safari with 11%, Internet Explorer with 10%, and Microsoft Edge with 3% uh, of the user base. Now, which browser has the best extensions and access? Google Chrome has the best compatibility and their web browser extensions make their browser even better. Firefox and Edge are also great for browser extensions while Safari is very difficult to use with extensions. If, you are, if having extensions is important for you, Safari might not be your ideal web browser. Now, here are some tips to keep your browser fast. Firstly, ensure your browser is up to date. Clear your browsing data. You can do this by clicking history in the menu or using the keyboard shortcut Control and H or Command and H if you're on Mac and then clear browsing data. Then disable unused extensions, add-ons, and plugins, and minimize the amount of windows and tabs you have open at once. Also, be sure to keep your security software up to date if you have one. All right, everyone. Now that I'm done with the presentation portion, I'm going to be doing a quick live demonstration of how you can use your browser. Now for this, uh, webinar I'm going to be demonstrating with Google Chrome. However, most of the features can be found across all browsers. So once you open your browser, which I'll show you, you can do by simply, it, um, once you've downloaded it, you'll have a, a shortcut that says access the internet or whatever the browser's name is on the right side of your screen. Or you can also access it from the taskbar with its icon or search for it in your computer's start menu by going to its corresponding letter. Um, so if I'm using Google Chrome, I'll go to G and hit Google Chrome from there. And then it'll open it up to this home page. All right. Now, firstly, we're going to be looking at and clearing history and cookies and cache, etc. You're just going to go to your history page. So I just did that automatically by hitting Control and H or Command and H on my keyboard. However, you can also do this by going to the three dots in the upper right corner of your screen. They're relatively small. They'll be beside your profile picture. Then simply uh, go to your history tab in the drop down menu that appears up and then hit on history up at the top. Now, this will show me all my recent history and history from years ago, if that's how long you're using your browser for. Now, to clear browsing data, cookies, or cache, on the left side, you'll see this little list. Click on the third option that says clear browsing data. Now, this here is going to um, bring up another menu. Um, you can either choose to clear basic data or advanced data. 
or and then there'll be a list of how long you want to choose from. Simply click on all time and then choose how long you want to clear your history for. I'm going to choose of the last hour. I'm going to choose what I want to clear. So if I want to clear my browsing history, my download history, my cookies, my cache, my passwords, my site settings, and let's just say I want to delete everything today. You'll select whatever you want to delete and then click clear data at the bottom right of this pop-up. All right, so it cleared my Chrome data in the past one hour, and you can choose to do this um, in, in you know, for however my, long the time period is for you. So now we're going to look at how to use incognito browsing, which is a function that won't save anything to your history. All right. So now to access incognito browsing, um, this is the same for most browsers. You're going to want to use the keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift, and N, or Command, Shift, and N if you're on a Mac. You can also do the same function by going to the upper right corner in the three dots and then hitting New Incognito Window as the third option. Now, as you can see, Google Chrome tells us that we can now browse privately, and other people who use this device won't see our activity either. However, if you do make any downloads and bookmarks, they will be saved. But Chrome won't save the following information, your browsing data, cookies and site data, information entered in forms, but website uh, activity still might be visible to the websites you visit, your employer or school, or your internet service provider. You can also choose to block third-party cookies. Cookies are something that allow websites to track basic information and habits about you but some features on some sites may break now simply to make a search just type in whatever you want to um to make the search so i'm going to type in barack obama and then it'll come back now just to show you how this works i'm going to go to my history and my non-incognito google chrome and as you can see there's no barack obama in my search history now Okay, now we're gonna be looking at syncing browser across different devices by signing in. Okay. If you go to the three dots in the upper right corner once again here, and then you go to your settings tab this time, way at the bottom, the third last option, you can see the first option is gonna be sync in Google services. Now this doesn't apply to all browsers, only Google Chrome, uh, although it is available on some others. You can choose to manage what you sync from this. You can turn off the sync as well. So you can choose to sync everything or customize your sync and then toggle these switches with all these different options. You can control how your browser history is used to personalize search ads and more. This is something that I see a lot of people going in and changing nowadays. And you can uh, encrypt your browser and review your sync data, allow Chrome sign in, auto complete searches and URLs, help improve Chrome's features and performance, make searches and browsing better, and Google Drive search suggestions. Google Drive is just Google's cloud storage services. All right. Now I'll be looking at how to change your browser to your default browser. So this one will be the browser of your choice and whatever browser you have installed on your computer. So first I'm gonna to wanna to go to my settings application. You can do that by going to your devices menu and searching for settings, for example, and then opening it up from there. Now, um, yeah, so to change your browser to your default, the browser of your choice, you wanna to go to the app section of your settings. And from here, go on the left side, go to default apps. This will vary if you're on a Mac or Chromebook or other device. You'll then want to go find the web browser option under choose default applications. Click on your current browser. And right now I have it set as Google Chrome because that's my favorite browser. However, I'm just gonna change it to Microsoft Edge to show you something that happened, okay? So now let's say I want to open a PDF file or any kind of file will work the same way what I'm about to show you. 
I will go to my file explorer. I will find the file that I want to open. And remember, usually files open in your browser if you just want to view them. And then I'm going to go to um, this folder and then choose this document. So now that I did choose Microsoft Edge as my default as this document just opened in Microsoft Edge, as you can see. So this, this resume, this document that was saved to my computer didn't open in Google Chrome since it's not my default browser anymore. It opened in uh, Microsoft Edge. And you can see that by the logo down at the bottom of my taskbar if I open and close it. Okay, so that's basically your default browser. Now, website permissions. So I'm on this website right now. To check its permissions, I have to click this lock at the top left corner of your screen. It'll show you that your connection is secure. So your information, for example, pa passwords or credit card numbers is private when it is sent to the site. It has access to your cookies and you can see the permissions once you click on the third option, the last option, site settings. Now you can see what permissions it has access to. Some of the main ones are the location, camera and microphone, although there are others as well, like sound, serial ports, clipboard, etc. So now last thing I'm gonna show you is how to personalize your browser a little bit. So on most browsers, there'll be a customized button somewhere. On Google Chrome, it's on the bottom right corner of the page, way in the bottom right. So here, um, it'll open a page that says customize this page. You can choose a background, adjust shortcuts and change the color and theme. As you can see, I really like this feature. I just like it plain black. And you can also upload a picture, either choose one or upload from device. I'm gonna upload from my device. So let's say I'm gonna want this one, okay? And then it'll set as my wallpaper for my browser. Isn't that nice? So that's just a nice little personal touch you can add. Now, that concludes our presentation and live demonstration on, uh, on internet browsers. I hope you found it helpful and now you're gonna start making more searches on the web.